another episode of Dish Upon a Star. My name is Samantha, and today we're trying something a little bit different. During this Christmas season of giving, and especially now during this pandemic, a couple of my YouTube friends have decided to get together, and we are doing this Disney YouTube monorail. So from December 1st to December 17th, each of us from different channels have been making a video to talk about a cause that's very important to us. It is called the Cast Member Pantry. So the idea for this monorail came from Pauline and Phil at Mouse and Mermaid. You can check out their channel down there. They do a lot of great vlogs, awesome unboxing videos. Go check them out. They're super fun. Uh, the idea behind this was to bring awareness to the cast member pantry. Um, as you know, many cast members have been displaced due to this pandemic and many of the layoffs and furloughs from the Disney company. Uh, so what the cast member pantry does is it creates bags of food and groceries that are giving to cast members and their families during this time. I have the contact info down below, so you can reach out to them on Facebook. Uh, there are links to donate. Um, there's also a link to their, I have an Amazon wish list of things that you can purchase to help them put together these grocery bags. I know that myself and many other Disney fans want to support our cast members, but unfortunately many of us do not feel safe or comfortable traveling to the Disney parks to do so. A donation to the cast member pantry is a great way to show support for the magic makers in what's quite frankly the least magical of times. As a former cast member myself, both in the parks and in retail, I cannot express how important this cause is to me. During my 2017 college program, I was fortunate enough to meet and work with some of the most amazing people that I've ever known. And I'm still really close friends with a lot of them. When you're among your Disney family, you truly feel all powerful. You feel that you have the ability to take a guest's vacation and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. You can make wishes come true and dreams come true. Guests may come to the Disney parks for their attractions or the delicious food, but they stay and continue to come back because of the magic that the, the cast members make and that unparalleled guest experience that's provided. Tragically, food insecurity amongst cast members is not exclusive to this pandemic. Many of our beloved magic makers work very long and exhausting shifts for a wage that is nowhere near what they deserve. Um, I have linked down below a series published by the Orlando Sentinel. It's called Laborland. They started running this series in December 2019, and it addresses the wage and poverty crisis, which runs rampant through Central Florida, especially amongst those who work in our theme parks and create the magic for us. Definitely worth the week read. Highly recommend. I believe it's easy for us as Disney fans to think of cast members only in terms of their work with the Disney company, but first and foremost, these are people. And even outside of this season of giving, I encourage you all to support this cause in any way that you can. Uh, the idea behind this series was for creators to share their perfect Disney day and donate the cost of that day to the pantry. Many of us, and that includes myself, have experienced hardships during this pandemic, so I know that's a big ask. What you can do in, instead of a donation is you can follow the cast member pantry on Facebook, you can watch these videos, you can learn more about it, Talk to your friends and family about it, and you can donate the gift of time. If you're located in the Central Florida area, you can reach out to them and you can donate your time to assist and volunteer to hand out food. The more people we can make aware of this cause, the more people that we can help. Now, on to that perfect park day. We weren't really given any guidelines, but I watched Pauline's video and her and Phil had some really awesome kind of back and forth questions that they asked each other about what their perfect park day would look like. Um, as a frequent park visitor and a former cast member, I already feel like I've experienced a lot of perfect park days. Um, one in particular was my 26th birthday that I spent while I was a cast member and my friends took me to a wonderful breakfast at the wave and we did magic kingdom and epcot and it was just so special and wonderful and we ended the day at jelly rolls which was amazing another time i think of was the last day of my college program where uh my grandma and my aunt and i spent the day in magic kingdom and i ran into dan cockrell who was then the, the vice president of the magic kingdom and I had previously served him when I worked um, at dessert party. I worked at Tomorrowland Terrace and I worked the Happily Ever After Fireworks dessert party. And I was asked to serve him and his family one night. And he had remembered me after that interaction. And he remembered that I was going to school to be a funeral director. And he remembered that he spoke to me and it was really cool to run into him on that day. 
Another perfect park day that I can think of that I've experienced was um, in Halloween last year. Eddie and I went to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Eddie had never been to a Disney Halloween party ever. And we dressed up as Gomez and Morticia Adams and we got a wonderful photo shoot taken by Sheriff of Photo Pass. And Sheriff, if you see this, I think of you whenever I see these pictures. They are so beautiful. They are so cherished in our home. They are so important to us. We so appreciate you taking the time to take those photos of us. Um, it was That was just a perfect day getting Eddie to experience uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. We got to see all the characters. We got to meet Mickey Mouse in his little spooky Halloween outfit. It was very cute. So now the guidelines behind our perfect park day for the sake of this video are we have to stay in one park. There's no park hopping in this perfect park day universe, which honestly is fine with me. I'm not much of a park hopper anyways. So on my perfect park day, we gotta spend it at my favorite park. We are going to go to the Magic Kingdom. I always start my perfect park days at the Magic Kingdom having table service at the Crystal Palace for Pooh Bear's Breakfast Buffet. You have to have the Pooh's Puff French Toast. That is my favorite breakfast item on Disney property. Second only to Mickey Waffles. They just taste better in Disney World. I don't know what it is. We bought the Golden Malted Mix that they have to try them at home and it just isn't the same. There's definitely a little extra pixie dust in the ones made at the Disney Park. My favorite snack, um, I have quite a few favorite snacks, um, but in a perfect scenario, it's probably the peanut butter sundae over at the Plaza ice cream. It's got the vanilla ice cream and then it's got peanut butter and it's got hot fudge and then it's got whipped cream and it's got peanut butter chips on it. And it's so good. And I think Plaza ice cream is just the best ice cream and I think that would have to be, that would have to be my favorite snack. The rides I would have to ride, absolutely Haunted Mansion. I like to wait until the end of the night to try to be the last person on it. I have achieved this once and it was awesome, loved it. Um, but otherwise I would definitely have to go see the Country Bear Jamboree. My, it was one of my grandpa's favorite shows. Uh, he passed away in 2017. I have a special seat in the back that I always sit in and I always feel like he is there with me when I watch it, and also it's just a fun and cute show. Definitely have to hit up People Mover, definitely have to hit up Carousel of Progress, two of the best, most underrated attractions at Walt Disney World, in my opinion. People Mover is amazing. If you've ever been on it and you've been fortunate enough to have the lights on in Space Mountain, it is a real treat. Also, Carousel of Progress is iconic. I don't know what they'll do if they ever make any changes to it. I, I know that it's ironic to have a attraction about progress and not really have it progress <laughs> but I think carousel of progress is perfect the way it is if I was to have a quick service meal at my perfect park day you guys know I have to go to Casey's corner and I have to get my corn dog nuggies with the plastic cheese when I worked at Casey's that was what I ate pretty much all summer was corn dog nuggies plastic cheese and then sometimes a side of mac and cheese but definitely that would be my have to be my that would have to be my pick for a quick service meal and my perfect park day at the Magic Kingdom. The merchandise that I absolutely have to buy are pins. These are my pins. These are also my pins. These are just my haunted mansion pins. Wanna know what's in this box? You guessed it. More pins. Pins are my favorite Disney collectible. Definitely the number one thing I spent money on during my college program and very fortunate that Magic Kingdom is home to probably one of the best pin shops on property, the Frontierland Mercantile. They always, always have the best limited edition pins, so I would definitely need to scope out and see what they have in there and purchase one or five or ten. The number one spot that I need a photo at to have my perfect Disney day, um, it's not really a spot but it's more of a experience. I have a collection of photos of me and my grandma with a balloon person, either on Main Street or in the hub, and we have to do it every trip. And we have to stand with the balloon person and hold the balloons. There is no real significance to it, except for that's something that we've always done together. So that is my number one most important photo op during a perfect day at the Magic Kingdom is Holding, standing on Main Street, holding the balloons at my grandma. That is number one to me. 
a purchase that I have to make would probably be a dress shop dress. I have far too many of those than I care to admit, but they are always so beautiful and they look so amazing. And as someone who is plus size, it is so awesome that Disney offers such flattering cuts of beautiful designer Disney clothes. I love the designer dress shop dresses. Those are, that is a purchase that I absolutely have to make. All right, and then a magical cast member experience. So this is a story about when I was a cast member and this is my favorite story and I'm probably gonna cry when I tell it. Um, I was working at Tomorrowland Terrace and I was working at the dessert party and there was a position called cookies. And so that's when you have your little cart and you're, you scoop the ice cream for the guests and you can help them make a sundae or they have like a decorate your own cookie station. So I used to be a pastry chef and so I was like, I knew how to like write with the pastry bags. So I would always want to work cookies because I would ask guests, what's your name? And then I would write their name on the cookie or I would type a little Mickey Mouse or something cute on there. Um, and I was working one night and this little boy kept coming up. He was very cute. And he just kept getting ice cream from me and like being all like, mm. and he's like, Sam, do you like Star Wars? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, my last name is Fett, like Boba Fett. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. And I just thought that was cute. And then it was the end of the night and he came up to me and he goes, Sam, can I have your autograph? And he brought his autograph book to me and I signed it. And I wrote, like, love Tomorrowland Sam. And honestly, like, that was the most proud I've ever been of being a Disney cast member. That was such a special moment to me. I wanted to be a cast member my whole life. And I really felt the Disney magic in that moment. Um, uh, and I have a picture with him. Um, I'll share it and I'll blur out his face. Uh, he was it was so cute i mean he couldn't have been more than like seven but it just it really like it warmed my my cold little heart and it made me so grateful to work for this company so i i think about that moment with um when that little boy asked me for his autograph i think about that often um and that was the first time that ever happened and then it ended up happening a couple more times with different children um and it was so special and what i ended up doing was i i bought an autograph book from uh walmart and it had Mickey on it. And um, if I saw a child dressed like a princess or, or a pirate or something, I would interact with that child like they were the princess or the character, and then I would have them sign my book. If you're a cast member and you are not doing this, definitely recommend it. It was such a fun thing to do. Really great way to interact with your guests. Highly recommend. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I am not able to donate the full cost of my Disney Dream Day, but I will be making a donation of $50 to the cast member pantry. I have also shared down below the link to their Facebook page, as well as the link to their Amazon wish list. I've also included all the names and links to the channels who have also participated in this challenge, in this little monorail. Uh, we have it going until December 17th. If you're someone with a Disney YouTube channel and you're thinking, wow, like I really wanna make one of these videos, we still have spots available. You can comment down below, message me. You can reach out to Pauline and Phil over at Mouse and Mermaid, and they're more than happy to get you set up and you can join this monorail with us. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Have a magical day and a wonderful holiday season. Please continue to stay safe, friends. Have a magical day.